We've been going from beginner to master on TypeScript state management for React. We've looked at a lot of different state management libraries, including how to just use it in vanilla JS and vanilla React, all the way through Redux and MobX and a bunch of other state managers. This time we're going to look at Effector. And if you haven't heard about this one before, it's an interesting model for how to do state management in React. It's an event-based model where you create a store and then you send it events and it updates the store and then updates your components. So by the end of this, you'll have a good understanding of what Effector is, how to use it. All right, first thing to do is clone out our to-do base. And I'm going to go in my TMP directory and I'm going to clone that into a to do and effector. We're going to call it effector. I'll bring up VS Code. All right, so what do I need to add? Let's go back over to our effector documentation and look at our getting started. And we need to bring in effector and effector react. So let's go do that. So I'll go to yarn add effector and effector react. And that'll start up the project and also get all of our other dependencies in there as well as Effector. So this is one of those state management libraries that works for a bunch of different frameworks. You bring in the Effector core, and then you bring in an adapter for React or Vue or whatever framework that you're on. I think it's just React and Vue, but you, know, you get the, your choice there. Okay, so, all right, so the next thing I wanna show you is what this app actually is. So let's do a yarn start on here and start that up. Okay, so this is our Chakra UI based to do list. We've got a nice little theme selector there for dark and light mode. We've got an ability to asynchronously load uh, to do's. We've got our list of to do's down here, and we've got a field where we can enter a new to do and then hopefully add a to do. Of course, none of this works right now. It's over in the store and it's not hooked up to anything. So let's go into the store and I'll show you around there. All right, so right up at the top, we've got an ID, which is a number for each to-do. We've got a text, which is the text of the to-do, and then a done, which says whether it's done or not. And then we have this nice little set of helper, handy helper functions, which I'm actually going to not expose. And I'm gonna rename this one so I can make it a little bit less ambiguous. And these basically just, they're functional programming style functions. They take, for example, a list of to-dos and then the ID that you want to update and then the text that you want to update it with and it returns a list of to-dos that are mapped through and basically just go and update that to-do item. These are actually nice little templates if you're looking for list management functional programming style functions, but they're here so that we don't have to really worry about it. What we're here to do is look at effector. So let's go and create a new effector state implementation. So the first thing we need to do is define what our store is supposed to look like. So again, let's say a store, and we'll have a list of to-dos, and then a new to-do, which is a string. And then we wanna create some events. So let's go back over here to our documentation, and we'll go over into our core concepts. And what we're gonna do is create events and those events are then sent to that store to update them. So an example of an event, and we'll go and like import create event. From effector. Is we're going to create a new if event called set new to do. Okay, now setting the to do which would be you know, setting this value, is gonna take a string. So we're, we want a string to go along with this event. All right, and then we want a, an add to do, which is gonna add this to do into that array. And that's not gonna take anything at all. So that's just an event that you send and it's basically a void. You don't, you don't send anything. It's gonna manage, the list is just gonna add one to it. All right, so now we gotta go and create our store and that's gonna listen to those events. So let's go back over here to Create store, and I'm just gonna copy a bit of that. And we'll call this store. Now we gotta give it a type because we're in TypeScript, so I'll add on store. And I gotta give it an initial state. So I'll add it to do's, and then new to do. 
And we got to import this. So we actually have create store. Cool. All right. Looking good. So it seems to be happy. And what we need to do now is respond to these different events. So let's say set new to do is going to take us a state, which is the current state, and then a new to do. And so if you're familiar with the Redux pattern, this is just like that. So we want to basically give it an updated state. So take the all the existing state. And then we want to go and add on new to do to update update that value. And we want to put it inside of a parentheses so that it creates an object. Cool. All right. So now let's go and add our add to do event. And in this case, we're going to set the new to do to an empty string. All right. And at that point, we will add to the to do list on state dot to do's with the new to do. And there you go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. OK, so now we need to export a bunch of this stuff so we can actually use it. So I'm going to export this as the default. But we also need to expose these event creators. So I'm going to export that and export the add to do as well. And let's go take a look now at how to consume this. So let's go over into our to do add. And from there, I need to import a hook. So I need to import use store from that effector react binding. So that's how it gets into the react ecosystem. And then I'm going to import the store from the store. And in this case, we're going to call it dollar store. It seems to be the convention in effector space to put in the dollar. Uh, and then I'm also going to bring in that uh, set new to do and add to do. It's like that. So I'll go down here to add store. And I'll get the current values of, of the store by using use store and then the store. And that's going to give us our new to do. So let's go take a look at that value equals store dot new to do in nice. It's got that hinting for us it's really well connected to the TypeScript ecosystem. And then on the, you're going to love this part. I, I think this is really great. So in the event here, all we're going to do and this is I think this is this is what really sold me on it was this we're going to call set new to do. And look at it, it's got the payload, which is a string, event, target, value. And that's all you need to do. You just need to em event, em emit this event, this set new to do event. And then it's connected because you got this on set new to do over here to the store. And then the store automatically runs that mutation for you. So really cool. Okay, the next thing I need to do is add a click handler to our button. And then I'm gonna call that add to do to just send that event. Let's take a look and see if it works. All right, if I go and add something here, the effector is cool. Add to do, ooh, cool. So it's automatically set that to an empty string, which I think means that it's actually doing it. But we need to be able to go and display the list of to dos to actually know for sure. So let's go back over here, we'll grab this out of here, drop that into there. And at the moment, I don't need any of these, but I do need to use that store. And then give it dollar store. And then I'm going to look at the to do's. Which are now handily typed. And let's see. All right, nice. OK, so now all we need to do is get it so that we can toggle this as well as change this value, delete stuff. So we need to enable the toggle update and remove functionality as well. But actually, it's pretty simple in this model. So let's go back over into the store and we're just going to create some new events for that. So we'll call it update to do. And then we'll give it an object in this case, that's going to be an ID, which is a number, and then a piece of text, which is what we're going to use to update that value. And we know we'll just call that update so it doesn't collide with the other one. And we'll call this toggle and remove. And in this case, all we want is that number. So we're just going to change that to number. 
Excellent. That's just going to be the ID. And then we just need to go and add a few more event handlers. So three more to be precise. So the first one we'll do is update. And in this case, let's see, is it going to hint us? It is. Look at that. It's going to hint us that we want, what we want here is an ID and a text string. So it's ID and text. And then we'll do update to do. And we'll give it the ID and the text. Nice. Okay. And then two more, one for toggle, which in this case, and you notice like now that I enter toggle over here, it automatically tells me, yeah, 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 your payload is wrong. So in this case, it's just gonna be the ID again. And look at me, I'm adding bugs as I go. So here we go, I'm gonna remove uh, new to do setting there. Okay, cool. And we'll call that toggle to do. Cool, and then one more. And we'll just put in remove. Okay, I think we're good, at least for the synchronous portion of this. Now we just need to implement on that. So I'm gonna bring in the toggle event, the remove event, and the update event. And let's start off with our checkbox. We'll set our checked value to the done. We will use our click handler and then toggle the to do ID in our input. We will use an on change and get that event. That event's going to tell us what the new value we need to send is. So we need to use update and we'll just give it the ID again and then the new value. Except that it needs to be an object, right? If you look over here, the payload. We need to have an object that has ID and text in it. So let's go and build that out. ID is that and text is that. Okay, nice. And then finally on the delete, I wanna do remove and then just give it the ID. And you notice like when you compare this to like a Redux or something like that, you've got no dispatch. You literally just emit these events. And then because of the nature of this, the store just picks up on those events and updates. So let's give it a try here, see if it works. So does this work? Okay, we can add it, we can toggle it, and we can delete it. Nice, okay, cool. Okay, so the last thing we wanna do is make this load button work. And let's go take a look at the button for that. We've got this load button over here and it shows us we got this JSON source. So we want to load asynchronously this JSON. Let's go and take a look at it. It's got ID, text, done. It's pretty much a to-do list. All right, so what we need to do is see how to model this asynchronous behavior in Effector. And the way that they do that is they create an effect. So I got, scroll down here to create effect. And this is how you hide what they call side effects in this model. So I'm gonna create a new effect. And let's just take a look at some of the example code here. We'll call this load. And it's gonna take a URL, which is a string. And it's gonna go fetch that and return out the JSON. And then down here, I mean, we're gonna look to see when that is done. So we would load and then do dot. And if you go down here, there's this one for done data. So basically there's a bunch of different events that come off an effect, and one of which is this done data. And the payload is gonna be this response. So that would be our new to-dos. You put it down in there like so. And now all I need to do to make this happen is I need to go over here to top bar and import that load from the store. And then down in our button, we're gonna do an on click. And we're just gonna call load and notice how it hints me with that parameter. So it's saying, hey, okay, there you go, here are your parameters. 
Drop that in there. Okay, cool. Nice. Let's try it out. Let me go back over here to our base to-do list. Hit load. Doesn't get a whole lot easier than that. So really clean. And some other cool things that I think are great are that there's actually a way to do a whole bunch of stuff around that event model in this effector system. So you can watch that store, you can dispatch events to that store outside of the React context. There's just so much that you can do with effector. It's really cool. All right, I certainly appreciate you spending the time with us to learn effector and effector React in this kind of a live version of this. We actually recorded that live on a live stream, so that was really a lot of fun, and I hope to do that again coming up soon. Let's talk about some pros and cons when it comes to this one. On the pros side, I think you have to put the size of it kind of in the pros column. It's actually kind of mid-range, along with other state managers. Clocks in at about 30K for both Effector and Effector React together, and that kind of puts it in the middle of the pack. Another big pro for me is that it does have that event-oriented style, and there are extensions that are basic, based in Vector that help you leverage that event-based model, which I think is really cool. And then, of course, the fact that it works both inside and outside of React almost in the exact same way I think is also excellent. And, of course, it works great with TypeScript, which is phenomenal. On the con side, I think the fact that it is an event-oriented framework is also kind of a con in that there is a bit of a, of a learning curve for folks who are used to something like a MobX slash Valsio solution or a Redux slash Justin solution, which is has the, the, the bi-directional or the unidirectional data model that we've been used to all this time. All right, well, I wanna hear from you and what you think about it. Be sure to put all of that in the comments section down below. And while you're there, be sure to drop by in the description and check out a couple of interesting links. The first is to our newsletter. They can get you access to this video a day earlier than everyone else on Tuesday. There's also a link to our Discord server. You can jump on that and have a chat with us directly. And of course, if you want, you can just buy me a coffee. There's a link to that as well. In the meantime, feel free to like and share this video with your friends. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. But in the meantime, from me to you, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.